Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, I'm gonna show you if you wanna become the best persuader in the country, if you wanna level up in persuasion, watch this full video, it'll change your life. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. Today I'm here with my man Scott Hogel. He wrote the book, How to Persuade, to persuade right here. This book is dangerous. I'm gonna tell you this book will change your life, but number one, I have him here with me today. He's a president of iHeartMedia in Honolulu. This man is unbelievable. We always say our mentors are people that have gone where we wanna go. Selling, closing, negotiations, persuading, all those things are things that are extremely important in our business. Guys, Scott today is gonna give us some tips that not only will help change your life, but he's going to share some stuff with us that's going to allow us to grow and do a better job of what it is that we do. But here's an important deal. Grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, right? When somebody's dropping wisdom bombs on you, take notes, write it down, and let's let this change your life. By the way, Scott, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Andy. What an honor to spend a few minutes with your audience. Thanks so much. The greatest gift you can give to a speaker is actually your attention, so I want to honor your time today. I want to get right to it. Let me first start off by telling you a little bit about Persuade. It's a book about relationship selling. You may or may not think you're in the sales business, but I would submit to you that everyone is in the persuasion business. Sales and pers is to persuasion as influences to leadership. Singers sing in a way that will get fans to listen. Sellers sell so customers will buy. Leaders lead so followers will follow. And teachers try to teach and persuade their students to capture their attention so they can make deposits in them to help them become better people. But before we talk about persuasion, let me talk about influence for a minute because what I've discovered, Andy, is that the personal growth industry is hypnotized by the word influence. Now, it's a very important word, but it won't get you paid. In fact, here's the headline, folks. Influence isn't enough. Influence means to have an effect on someone. Persuasion actually means to move people from point A to B in a conversation. And that's what the art of sales is. It's the ability to move people emotionally, financially, intellectually. But how do you do that? And if everyone's in the sales business, where can you start? And that's what I want to talk to you about today. But before we do, let me just give you a quick elevator pitch on Persuade. There's seven chapters. It's Persuade, the seven empowering laws of the sales maker. And the first three chapters are what I call the relationship chapters. The reason I call them the relationship chapters is because you've got to learn how to win with people first in life. Because if you fail with people, you'll fail with your life. The next three chapters, the law of the sixth sense, the law of the close, the law of discovery. I call these the competency chapters. Because if you're not good at what you do, you can be very lovable, but people won't trust you with their money and you'll fail in your profession. But then this, the last chapter is what I call the character building chapter. I call it the law of the prospector. Now you may think, Scott, what did you put a chapter about character in a sales book for? For one very simple reason, there will come a day in your life, no matter how successful you are, where your sales skills will fail you, but your character will sustain you. So in the law of the prospector, there's some soft selling skills that I'll teach you where you'll have a little bit more hard selling skills in the front end of the book. So there's three themes I do want to talk to you about today. One is called mentorship, a theme that has changed my life. A theme, by the way, I know has changed your life if you're watching Andy. I had the opportunity to watch hundreds of people listen to him yesterday as he invested in them. Today they're back in their office and in their car dealerships making more money because of what he shared with them. So I want to talk about mentorship, but then I'm going to talk about salesmanship and also relationship selling. But first I've got to tell you a little bit about mentorship. It's easy to talk about success when you've been at it for 30 years, but I didn't plan to go into the sales business. Let me tell you my story. So before I talk about Persuade in the 30 years of the sales and leadership business that has led to my success, let me tell you how I got into the business. I call myself an accidental salesperson. Andy, I know you've got a similar story. Have you ever met anyone before that grew up and said, hey, I want to go into sales? And, and you know, for a very good reason, let me just say this. My wife, Kate, who's a great connector, I actually mentioned her in the book. In fact, what makes Persuade such an intelligent book is that the first sentence of the first chapter starts off with the word, my wife, Kate. But my wife, Kate, says this. Sales is a four-letter word to a lot of people. It's a turnoff. And you can kind of understand why, because if you've ever met a salesperson that tried to manipulate you for selfish benefit versus move you for a mutual benefit, you walk away with a bad taste in your mouth. But like I said, everyone's in the sales business. The question is, are you any good at it? But there's a way to sell people and serve people in such a way where you can earn a high income, but also add value to other people as well. So I was the accidental salesperson. Let me tell you the story. I'm 20 years old. I leave the Mad West. I go all the way to Virginia Beach, Virginia. The job I moved there for disappears over the weekend. I'd already turned U-Haul in. And back then, 
back then, I know I don't look old, but back then is when you actually looked into help wanted ads and they had a opening for an account executive at a radio station. Now picture this, I'm 20 years old and I was so excited to be an account executive and I didn't even know what I was supposed to do when they hired me because you don't know what you don't know when you're 20 years old. But I was told I was in the business of selling advertising. So here I am, this 20 year old kid on the street, I'm meeting with people. Here I'm supposed to be the expert on how to grow their business and I'm meeting with people who are two or three times my age who have bet the bank to start a business. How the heck are you gonna have credibility at that age? Well. I'm glad you asked that question. Here's what I learned, Andy. It would take me years to develop the talk track, the very thing you're giving to your students in one day. It would take me years to learn what to say, but here's how I survived and became very good at what I do. I learned how to become a Socratic. What does that actually mean? I learned how to train my brain to think in questions. I might not know what to say, but I can then know what to ask. My five best friends back in the day were who, what, when, where, why, and, and when, and you know what? When you can learn what questions to ask your customers, that becomes critically important. Socrates, back in ancient Greece days, that's how he would actually teach his students. He would sit in the city square and he would actually ask people questions and that's how he would teach. That's how I would spend most of my time on sales call. I spent most of my time asking questions and listening, but then when it came for my turn to talk, I would go into what I call feature benefit selling, which I'll talk to you about in first a minute, but I'm digressing. I wanna get back to mentorship for a minute. And here's the picture. I'm 20 years old, now I'm 21, I'm 22. I'm having some success, but not a lot because I'm young and it takes a while. We tend to underestimate the journey that's involved, but it takes a little bit of a while. I remember I found myself at a seminar, somebody said, Scott, you got to go to the seminar. You'll never guess who it was. I know you know this man. He's the father of motivational speaking, Zig Ziglar. Mm, great guy. So I'm in my early 20s. I'm sitting in a Zig seminar, and he's going through this whole list of character qualities you got to have to be successful in life. And I taped it with a cassette recorder at the time. And I remember going home after that, and I wrote them all out. And you know what I learned about that? I looked at that list, and I thought, I don't have many of these. But I knew that I could learn. And this is the wonderful thing about our profession. You can earn as fast as you can learn. You can go out today, make a phone call, make a sales call, and change the financial trajectory of your life. Nothing's stopping you but you. And that's why I think this is the greatest profession in the world. Because it gives you the ability to learn words. You don't need a college degree to be successful. Anybody can do it if they're willing to pay the price. But I got very fortunate because a guy named Zig Ziglar came into my life at the time. Tom Hopkins, who wrote my Ford, I would listen to his tape the first few years, take his material, adapt it to my industry, the very thing you're teaching your students to do. And by the way, I am sitting next to a grandmaster. If you've seen his videos, you know what I'm talking about. But people will sometimes ask, how did Andy become a master? And knowing him as I do now, I can tell you this, he became a student. To this day, he has incredible humility and he's always asking questions. To develop the heart of a student, that's the secret to mastery. It's the secret to success in anything you want to do. So Tom would come into my life. When I would go into leadership, I would gravitate to John Maxwell. And I would have leaders every step of the way. When I decided to write a book, people who wrote books would become my mentors. Who are you following today? So there's a famous Chinese proverb I love, and the, and the proverb says this, if you want to know the way, ask somebody on the way back. I'm standing with a man right now who has made more money in a car dealership than anyone in the history of the world. And if you listen to his story, you could reproduce what he did in your industry. So let me talk to you about relationship selling first. So let's start and I want to talk to you about relationship selling now. What is relationship selling by definition? It's simply this. In traditional sales, the transaction becomes the reason for the relationship, but in relationship selling, the relationship becomes the reason for the transaction. When I saw those 300 students of yours yesterday watching you as you modeled and role played for them, how you would go into a room and be able to connect on command and on demand and close a deal, I recognize the fingerprints of a relationship selling instantly. And he's a master connector. And I'm gonna show you how to be a master connector today too, in very short form. And I'm gonna make it so easy that you can teach your kids how to do it. In fact, true story, I was talking to my son's high school class, he has an entrepreneur class a few weeks ago, Andy. I taught him what I'm about to share with your students here today. He comes to me two days later, he says, Dad, what you taught my class? I had a couple of friends, they got in trouble at school, they got pulled into the dean's office, they did what you taught them to do, and they got out of trouble. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't know. The skills we're gonna talk about today, they can be used to help people or hurt people. They should never be used to manipulate people but to motivate them to make good decisions for their family. 
and for themselves. And I trust that's where your heart is today too. So as I talk about the art of relationship selling, keep this in mind that it needs to come from the heart because if it doesn't, it comes across as hollow. And people are smart. Instinctively, we can tell when somebody's in it for themselves or they're in it to serve us as well. And that's what's so great about how Andy teaches his students. It's not just the sales technique, but it's the heart behind it as well. So relationship selling and transaction and relationship selling, the relationship becomes the reason for the transaction. But in traditional transactional selling, the transaction alone becomes the reason for the order itself. So how do you connect on demand? You've never met someone before. Maybe you're in the auto business, maybe you're, you're in the advertising business, maybe you're cold calling on the street. How do you actually get people to like you? Well, there's this process I called, I call about making deposits in the relationship bank account. In fact, you've got to make a deposit right before you can make a withdrawal. And frankly, until you've made a deposit, you haven't earned the right to ask me for the order. Add value before you ask for value because it creates an invisible return. Let me say that in because this principle has changed my life. Add value before you ask for value because it creates an invisible return. How do you actually do that when you're meeting someone for the first time? Let me actually model it for you. And I'm going to model it with this headline that says, Practice the 60 Second Rule. Say something nice to somebody in the first 60 seconds that you meet them. In fact, let me role play it for you for a minute in one of the most important sales of my life. But before I do that, I've got to share with you, there's a hero from your business that I actually talk about and persuade. His name's Joe Gerard. Joe had a gift of doing something that was so profound, he wound up in the Guinness Book of World Records for selling the most cars ever. Mm -hmm. I think it was like 13,000 cars. It's crazy, right? This technique I'm gonna show you, my son, after I taught his class, he said, Dad, so these three A's you're giving us, you're saying we'll be a triple A salesmaker if we practice this. I said, yes, Casey, you will. Here's the three A words you wanna write down. Admire, affirm, and acknowledge. Affirm means to make strong. Now remember, we're talking about building the relationship before you build for the revenue, because you haven't earned the right to ask me for my business yet until you... Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. Right now is the time to take yourself to a whole new level. Listen, the market is gonna demand you to get more skill right now than you've ever needed to have. And if you do, not only will you become great, but you're gonna make more money than you ever imagined. I would love to talk to you. Tell me what you need help with. Text me right now. If you see on the screen, my cell phone number is 918-210-0254. Let me say that again, 918-210-0254. Shoot me a text message. Tell me what you need help with. I'll reach out and call you. Let's take you to the next level. Let's get back to the video. Added value to me. So practice the art of the 60 second rule. This is how Joe would do it. When somebody would come on to the lot, the first thing he'd do is he'd go up and greet them by their car and he'd walk up and he'd go, oh wow. Where did you get one of these? There was only 500 made that year. Or he might say, this color over here, that's a pretty unique color. Or he might say, he, he's, he's looking at that going, I can't believe you're bringing that car in. We would love to have that car. Now, emotionally, what was Joe doing? Joe was setting the emotional environment, which great salespeople do, but he was making a deposit. Joe was affirming a decision they had made in the past. He was acknowledging something they had done, basically saying, you guys have really good judgment. I admire this decision you made. And well, there's two types of selling, folks. There's, there's pushing and then there's pulling. When you tell people things, it pushes them. When you ask people things, it pulls them towards you. When you're making compliments to people, and again, not hollow compliments, but something from the heart where you're recognizing greatness in people. When you can find something that you can affirm and acknowledge and show that you admire in somebody in the first 60 seconds and then speak to that, what happens is you're making a deposit in the relationship bank account. One of the stories, the, the first chapter is the law of connection. And the law of connection says this, the salesperson, the sales maker connects emotionally before they communicate financially. Let me say that again. You have to connect emotionally before you communicate fi financially. And here's why. You can't see it, but there's this invisible string from my heart back to my wallet, right? So you're not going to get this until you go in through this. This is the first door. So this is what Joe was so good at doing. So he built instant report by looking for the greatness in people. Now, he looked and talked about their car, but you may start asking questions or notice something about their dress. But look for something in the first 60 seconds you like about somebody, talk about that. Here's why it's so important. At the end of the Law of Connection, I talk about 10 different ways to connect with people on demand and on command like that. And Andy, I saw you practice a lot of these just off the cuff in your seminar yesterday. But there's one I talk about, one of the reasons this is so important is 
I talk about a book Tom Rath wrote called The Bucket Dipper. Here, here's what he talked about. He said, we all basically have this bucket inside of our hearts. Most people during the day are making withdrawals. They're taking their scoop and they're pulling from us. But he said, if you can be one of those people that actually comes and adds to it, remember, add value before you ask for value. So Joe Girard was great at adding value. Let me role play for you one of the most important sales I had to make of my life. It's how I asked my friend and mentor, Tom Hopkins, to write it forward. Now, you have to understand what a big sale this was because when you ask somebody to endorse your book, now I've known Tom on and off over the years, but I wasn't close to him. And in other words, I see him every few years when he came to town. I wasn't sure he could pick me out of a crowd when I got the meeting to make my ask. And the night before, I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, how do I ask the closer of closers? How do I sell the seller of sellers? Can you imagine if you had to come and sell Andy something? I mean, how intimidating would that be? This is my first, by the way, Tom Hopkins was my first trainer. No kidding. In 1999. Yeah, so it's cool. Like, he's, he is the closer of all closers. You know, that's it's why we have such similar DNA in the profession of selling. I and mean, we learn from some of the same masters. Let me just say this, folks. It's very important who you learn from. It's not just what you learn, but who you learn from. If you haven't picked a mentor, you've got to find somebody to follow. Find somebody who walks the talk and talks the talk like Andy. Because... The deposits, it, character is imprinted face to face, and as you read the book he's preparing right now, as you watch his YouTube videos, you want to be asking yourself, how can I make this work for my life? People are flying in from around the country on their own dime, and from what I understand, a lot of people on their last dime, because they're struggling in the profession of sales. It's because they haven't learned the art of sales. If you haven't done that, may I encourage you, he's doing seminars every month. Sign up for one today, it'll be the best decision you've ever made. Back to my closing story. I don't know what you told so it's the night before, and I'm practicing the art of affirming, acknowledging, and admiring. It's the night before, I'm in my hotel room, I'm thinking, how do I connect and build a kind of rapport with Tom, and, and then how do you ask, set up such an ask? Because when you ask somebody to endorse your book, what you're basically saying is, you need to vouch for me, put your arm around me. You're telling the world that I approve of this. How do you get someone of such high stature? And this is what came to mind. I'm thinking to myself, I start asking myself, what do I know about Tom? So I start to go back in my memory banks, and I go, well, he's a great sales trainer. I know Tom likes red wine, because I had dinner with him once 10 years before that. I know he lives in Scottsdale. What else do I know about Tom? Oh, he just won this prestigious award, best sales trainer in the world, because Tom's trained like 3 million people prior to his uh, going into semi-retirement. I thought to myself, that's how I'll capture his attention. That's how I'll touch the heart before I reach for the wallet. So this is what I did. It was like 11 at night, I went to Albertsons, and I, I was looking for the right bottle of wine to buy, and I don't know what to buy, but I, and I, I'm spending like 20 minutes because it's an important meeting. If you have an important ask coming up, I would encourage you to practice this in the first 60 seconds of your conversation. I passed this bottle, and I knew this was the one, and I got it. I put it in my bag. The next day, we arrive, we sit down at the table, and I have a little goodie bag with his gift. And remember, add value before you ask for value. Make a deposit before you make a withdrawal because you haven't earned the right yet. So I said, Todd, before we get started, thank you so much for having lunch. I'm thanking him. Before we get started, I just want to thank you for the difference you've made in my life. I started listening to your tapes when I was 20 years old. I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't have a mentor like you. And I've enjoyed getting to meet you on and off over the years. But you've changed my life, and I know that you've created millions of people around the world. The entire sales profession owes you a great debt of gratitude. And I just want to say thank you. And by the way, I know you recently won that award, greatest sales trainer in the world. So in honor of that, and I will hold it up, I got you a bottle of the Golden Eye because you're the gold standard in training. Mm, that's good. So, and as lunch went on, I asked him, Tom, would you be willing to write a forward, I'm gonna write a sales book. I explained my why and my dream, and he said, sure, no problem. Now, did that sound sincere? Did it come from the heart the way I, I just shared the story? Absolutely. I am grateful to Tom for the rest of my life, not because he wrote the forward for my book, but because as I went into my memory banks, and I think about the difference he made in my life, so I talked to him about the difference he made for me. I talked to him about the greatness inside of him. So in those first 60 seconds, when you meet somebody new, Find something to speak to that you can affirm, strengthen them about, that you can acknowledge or admire something in their past and talk to them. How often does somebody talk to you about you? Never. It's never, right? So that's the art of relationship selling. It's about putting the customer 
before the sale, about putting the relationship before the revenue. It's the golden rule. Treat others as you would want to be treated. And when you put other people first, what you're gonna find is that once the relationship comes first, the revenue kind of follows, it kind of takes care of itself. Here's the other thing that happens. As you're making that deposit in the relationship, relationship bank account, trust is being built. And trust in the sales maker eventually transfers to trust for the transaction. And the biggest thing people face is fear. So that confidence and that trust in you neutralizes that fear. And that's the art of relationship selling. The next thing I want to talk to you about is actually how do you make an ask? In fact, this all falls within a session I teach, how to master the art of the ask. So now that you've connected and you've built some rapport, you've made a deposit in the relationship bank account, you've affirmed them, you've got a little bit of connection going. Now, you've got to connect before you close. How do you actually make the ask? How do you make the presentation? What's the value proposition? Why should somebody buy from you and, some, and not somebody else? Let me first start off and illustrate with a proverb, and I will read this to you. It's written by the wisest man who have ever lived. You might have heard him as King Solomon. It comes from Proverbs 16, 23, and here's what, it, here's what Solomon's advice is to you today. The heart of the wise instructs their mouth and adds persuasiveness, persuasiveness to their lips. Let me say it again. The heart of the wise instructs their mouth they teach themselves what to say. And when they do that, they're able to add persuasiveness to their lips. How would you like to walk into a room, meet a customer, connect on demand, and close, one call close like that? Amazing. It's amazing. So there's the art of relationship, but there's the art of making the ask too. What is Solomon talking about? He's saying you have to retrain your brain how you think. Here's why. You're no different than me like everybody else. We're all focused on ourselves. It doesn't make us selfish. Self-focus is a natural part of life. So when you're meeting with a customer, you're naturally thinking, how do I sell them? How do I close them? I need to make some money. You're thinking of yourself. So part of the art of sales is being able to short circuit that switch in your head and turn it around. Now this is counterintuitive. You have to retrain your instincts to talk in what I call WIF FM language, W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? A lot of times what we think is meaningful to us is meaningless to the customer. You've got to talk in benefit language to the customer. Now, it sounds tough, and by the way, it is because you have to renew your mind. You have to change like what you were teaching everyone yesterday, and you were teaching people how they've got to spend time training, 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 because you've got to create new talk tracks in your head, and this is, this is a practice of learning how to retrain your brain. Let me tell you a story of how to retrain your brain. I actually tell this in the, in, the, in the chapter, The Law of the Sixth Sense. My son, Bailey, who, worked, who went to a mid-pack baseball school, played baseball while he was there, and we had this interesting experience. Let me set the table first and give you an idea so you understand how, why they taught the kids what they did. Mid-pack is one of the greatest schools in the history of baseball. They practice the art of Kaizen. They practice seven days a week, 365 days a year. Wow. It's quite grueling, actually. And the coach there, Dunmar Morrow, is legendary. And they've won a lot of championships. Their work ethic is so extraordinary that when my son went to baseball showcases on the mainland, he felt like the practices were like half speed. So they would do different things and they would teach players different things. So, so for example, this is what they would teach the catchers. They would put the catchers, you can picture a baseball catcher in catcher's gear. They would have him get on his knees, but they would take his glove away. And the pitchers would start throwing balls in front of him. And he would have to block the ball with his body. Now, if it's me and a boss coming at me at 70 miles an hour, I'm getting out of the way. Oh, yeah. How does a kid stand in front of a fastball and not want to get out of the way? They've retrained their brain. True story, Andy. I know you have kids like I do. Bailey was probably 15 at the time. He's in the batter's cage. Kids at that age are probably pitching 60, 70, 75 miles an hour. My wife and I are right across from it. And we hear this big thud, the pitcher goes boom, and it hits him right here on the side. And we're like, oh my gosh, is he okay? We could hear it. He throws the bat down, he walks to first. So at the end of the game, we're driving home in the car. Like, Bailey, are you okay? We heard it, you could hear the thud. He goes, oh yeah, dad, I knew it was gonna hit me. I'm like, what do you mean? Dad, we're taught to read the pitch off the pitcher's fingers. If I could tell it was gonna hit me, and I said, why didn't you get out of the way? This is what Bailey said. Because I know if I wear it, I get on base. What did Bailey do there? He retrained his instincts. Instead of getting out of the way, he took the hit so he can get on base. Part of retraining your brain in the profession of sales, it's a new language. It's going to take you some time, so be patient with yourself. That's a piece of advice I want to give you. Be patient with yourself. The stuff you're going to hear from Andy and you're watching on his YouTube channel and hopefully you're coming to a seminar next month, this is the first deposit, the first installment, but you've got to work at it. Like, kids work at vocabulary words week after week in school. 
but give yourself time, be patient. So let's get back to how to make the art of the ass. How do you actually present something in such a way where the customer will like it? I want to take you back to ancient Greece. There's a guy named Aristotle, and I talk about this in the sixth chapter of the Law of Discovery. Aristotle believed there were three, four, three primary ways to persuade people. The first is what's called logos. Logos means knowledge. What is the information, the data points that you're going to give to somebody? What's the data point? You've got to be able to give the data point, but don't just give them the data point. Tell me why it's good for me. So for example, let's say you're selling Ford F-150s that are made out of aluminum. That's the data point. But what this means for you, Andy, is that you're not going to have to worry about it rusting like some of those other trucks out there. That's why the F-150 has the better resale value. You see what I did there? One sentence was the data point, but I spent a couple sentences saying, here's why it's good for you. So I'm talking in benefit language. A lot of people just say, we sell the best trucks in town. They have the highest resale value and it's blah, 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 blah. As salespeople, we show up and we throw up instead of learning how to talk in benefit language. So logos is the first way. You've got to have your data points down. And like Andy teaches all the time, have your data points down. And then what's the word track? What's the benefit to the customer? The second form of persuasion, he believed what was called pathos, which means emotion. You were so amazing yesterday, not just in how you were just exciting your emotion, but some of the things you taught about getting excited because confidence convinced, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you can't move anyone financially until you first move them emotionally. You gotta be excited about what you're doing. So you gotta be able to persuade them emotionally. And then finally, he believed that ethos was a form of persuasion. Ethos was, by definition, in the Greek world, it was character. And in other words, what's your personal story? Why should someone trust you? Why should they buy from you? In ancient Greek, they, the Greeks believed that um, reputation was like a stamp that would like make an imprint on somebody, like a, a thumb imprint. But Romans believed characters made up the total sum parts. And what we're trying to impart to you today is not just one or two sales skills, but a whole slew of them. So you can develop the character of a master communicator, a master persuader, a master questioner. Because when you can do that, you've learned how to master the art of the ask. Thank you very much. My oh, man, hey guys, everybody watching this right now, I'm just gonna tell you, you notice, anytime we got two ears, one mouth, keep your mouth shut, listen. This guy's amazing, gone a long way, he's extremely smart. We're all built a little different, the knowledge, you take it, you learn it, you dominate. If you guys wanna get the book, guys, there's a link in the description below, I'm gonna put one down there in the description link, it's called Persuade. You can click on it, buy it, also they can go where else to get the book. So it's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or wherever books are sold. There you go, abracadabra. Guys, crush it, kill it today, much love. Thanks. See you guys soon. Aloha.